so today our guest is Amanda Bradshaw, and she's the creator of a project called Thousand Pugs. Can you Hello. show us your pug? Can you show us your pug, Amanda? Hi, pug. Cool. All right. So, um, on Kickstarter, so she launched a project on Kickstarter, and she reached her funding goal of nine thousand six hundred thirty-six dollars in just thirty-six hours. And so today she's going to share with us what happened and how she did it. So thank you so much for being with us, Amanda. I know. Sure, I'll warn you all now that I'm, I'm not good on camera because I spend all my time behind a camera, so be warned. Okay. I'll just hold okay. the pug up every now and then yeah, to keep it exactly. up. Exactly. <laughs> just, just put the pug in front of you and talk. <laughs> um, all right, well, so thank you for being with us. Sure. All right. So, so can you give us a little background? What, like, what you do, and how did you start shooting pugs? And, <laughs> and then, yeah, I just give us a little background. Pugs. I had a really bad day at work one day, and no, um, I am a pet photographer in San Francisco. Pretty much do uh, just dogs, all kinds of dogs, not just pugs. Um, okay. But kind of a long story how I got here. Um, mm -hmm. I used to work in IT. And yeah. the short version of the story is I was in a car accident and couldn't do the job that I used to do anymore. So okay. it took me a long time to try to find something that I could still do. And I just kind of stumbled. I'd always worked with dogs. And I got my first film camera when I was like 13. Um, yeah. So I had a pretty strong background in photography. And when I okay. found out that people actually make a living doing dog photography, it was this big like, really? Ooh. You won't pay me to do this? This was like... This was made like for me, so that's kind of how I got started with it. Oh. And uh, the pug thing just developed kind of on its own as a little a little niche. I so. see. Okay, I see. So, so when was that? How long? How long ago was that when you started? Um, I started a business. I guess about three years ago. Two and a half, three years ago. Okay, about two or three. You start shooting. Um, you start shooting um, um pets. Dogs, yeah. I see. And then, so, all right. So, how, when did you, how did you come up with your your um, project idea, Thousand Pugs? Uh, again, kind of randomly. Uh, I had a little going going back a little bit. I was never a pug person. I always have to have that disclaimer because pug people are kind of they can be crazy. So people realize really? like, oh god. <laughs> yeah, they're kind of like cat people. They're just a little, they're a little special in a good way, but. Um, I was never a pug person, uh -huh. and I had this little foster pug come along, and he was just like the coolest little dog. I was like, wow, now I know why people go nuts over these little dogs. And he was chewing on a book one day. I think I have it. Yeah. My uh, visual aid. So I have this art book that someone gave me called A Thousand Dogs, and he was just chewing on it, which you yeah, yeah. be able to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I just remember looking at it thinking like, wow, if that was a thousand pugs, that would just be the coolest book. And that was literally like three years ago. And it just kind of always stuck around in my head. And yeah. just one of those weird things like, oh, that would be really cool to do, you know, fill in the blank. And uh -huh. <coughs> I just got pug hair down my, down my throat. Hang on. It's okay. It's okay. Take your time. Occupational hazard. <laughs> um, so it was just one of those random things like wow it would be really cool to do that someday Wow. and I was just kind of getting a little burnt out um, and really wanted to kind of get involved in a project Yeah. And I thought oh, well I'll just do it so I just kind of decided that you know someday never you know sometimes someday doesn't come Yeah. so I might as well see what happens so it was probably I guess it was in October where I'm like I'm just going to go for it and just try, see what happens. And then I launched the project literally like November 1st because I wanted to do it in a full calendar year. Um, yeah. and I didn't want to wait until 2013 because once, you know, I wanted to do it, ah. I really wanted to do it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I kind of October decided to go ahead with it and launched it November 1st. So it was pretty escalated. Timeline wow. Right? Yeah. I see. Okay. So well, that's the whole story. Wow. So so you had, but you had this idea in the back of your head for a while, for like two, two to three years, two years, two three years, yeah. and yep. then you've been shooting, um, shooting. Well, 
taking pictures of. <laughs> you can say shooting. <laughs> shoot, uh, shoot, shooting dogs, pets, right? And <laughs> and um, so and and then um, and you decided to go for it in October, and then you yep. launched the the project in in, in November. Yep. So, um, what? How big was your existing network? Because you're building your network uh, for this and ever since you started, right? Um, yeah, it was kind of. I wasn't sure how big it is. Uh, the little plug has a blog that has a really big following. Um, so I knew that there was a fan base there. I think he had maybe you know 700 Twitter followers, but I never really tweeted. It was kind of like an auto feed from the blog. Um, yeah. Blog I did every day, every weekday for the last it'll be three years in April. Wow. So that was like my main like consistent and it was you know it's photography based sort of. I mean there's a picture every day and a little story. Um, so we had a lot of Facebook friends, a lot of Twitter friends. So I knew that there were plenty of people on board. Yeah. I had no idea how many were kind of lurking in the background because yeah. I didn't know. I mean my original. Concern was not being able to find a thousand. I was like, "Wow, a thousand is a really big number. What if I get to like 600?" <laughs> <laughs> that was my big concern: was not getting enough hugs. Um, yeah. So I launched it in November, figuring it would take a couple months to kind of catch on. And then, yeah. you know, I would through November and December. By the time January came around, I would have some followers. And from literally from the day it launched, it went nuts. Um, like as as I was uploading the site and kicking it live, I had people chatting with me on Facebook saying, "Wow, well, I see the site's up. Like, I haven't even told anybody it's out there yet. I hadn't sent out like the notification, and people were just really excited about it." Oh, when um, you say launch, you mean the website, not the not the Kickstarter project. You no, know, no, the website. I see, I see. So you 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 started the without thousandpugs.com, is that right? Yeah. So the uh, first time anybody okay. knew about the project outside of like my immediate friends was November first. I figured I, I would want to build a fan base before launching the Kickstarter. Um, yeah. I did things a little backwards just because the timeline was a little awkward. Um, unlike a lot of Kickstarter things which are dependent, like my project wasn't dependent on Kickstarter. Like whether Kickstarter worked or not, it was still happening, yeah. um, which is a little different than most, most yeah. of them but just because the way the timeline worked, there was no way for me to do a Kickstarter back in November when I didn't have, probably, in retrospect, I probably could have because there are enough followers, it turns yeah. out, but I think in November there were enough people to support it, so I waited. But and you didn't know, you didn't know until you was, uh, wait, okay, okay, go on, sorry. Oh, that's okay, what was the question? So, okay, um, all right, so you launched your blog, so, so, let me, let me give it back to you, okay, let me just follow. Sure. So three years ago, you had a, um, you started a blog, What's it called? Mm -hmm. uh, the, the Daily Puglet. Daily Puglet. Okay, good. <laughs> Daily it's Puglet. written by the pug. The pug writes it. Oh, the, the pug writes it. Okay, yeah. good. And and you had you been consistently doing it every day on oh, no, the weekdays, not the uh, weekdays. Every weekday, yeah. Every, every weekday during... for three years, and you built um um audience. Do you do you have like um subscribers? Do you know how many subscribers yeah, you have? Yeah, there's six or seven hundred subscribers on there. Okay. Um, and there's a pretty, I mean, daily following. I mean, if I look at my web stats, I think it's like, you know, 10,000 hits a day kind of thing. So wow. But it's consistent. It's literally like the same people every single day come. Um, wow. So he has definitely has a dedicated following for sure. Got um, it. And then so in October, you just decided to, to go for it, and you didn't tell anybody about it and, no. and in terms of this project, and then you launched the website. A thousand yes. pugs, with the and that is that when you st started your your Facebook page? Yeah, started the Facebook, started the website, and basically opened it up to the community and said, "I'm going to travel to cities in America and Canada. Um, let me know. You know, I, I basically said whoever barks the loudest, I'm going to come to your city. So you know, who loves their pugs? And I took emails and said, okay." You know, I would get 500 emails from, you know, Milwaukee. I mean, just these random places. And I knew I was going to go to about 10 cities, so I just took the first 10 who sent me the most emails, basically. Um, and that took about a week. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I, I literally thought it was going to take months to get going. And that's why I'm kind of talking about getting caught up. Um, 
the, the timelines have all been so compressed that I've just literally been just trying to catch up since this started. Um, but yeah, it took about a week to get all the cities on board. Um, I teamed up with rescues, hug rescues in the local areas because I knew yeah. that would be a good way to get the word out to a lot of people. Yeah. Um, I wanted there to be a um, like a charitable giving component. So I'm going to yeah. donate ten thousand dollars from the project to the rescues that I've teamed up with. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to make sure that there was a way for me to involve people, so I knew who to give money to. I didn't. I yeah want to like play God with the money so I just figured if I organized it you know whoever I worked with they just get the money and I wouldn't have to think about it I see so. wow okay so it's funny you know your initial concern is finding a thousand pugs and it, it just... oh yeah oh no there are, <laughs> there are sequels planned until like 2015 at this point wow still emails from people yeah, the, the problem is not enough pugs. It's not having enough spaces to where I just get these heartbreaking emails from people, and it's just like, oh, I, I, I'm sorry. Like, I can't oh. go over it. And, um, yeah, when I opened up the registration for the first half, um, Seattle crashed the server, actually. The, wow. One of the cities, um, Seattle, sold out in like five minutes. I ended up the the calendar system that I used the on, like the online booking system uh, couldn't handle the flow and ended up just booking like 20 extra people. <laughs> I have like an insane insane schedule in Seattle. They ended up with like 20 more pug spots than they were supposed to have just because the system couldn't keep up with the demand. Um, so yeah, the registration I think about 500 signed up in the first week. Wow. So okay, let, let me let me just kind of put it together because. Okay, your, sure. your project is shooting a thousand pugs in a year, yeah. right? Yeah. And you need to get a thousand pugs, and and you just basically um, see who has the most emails sent, what city has more emails sent to you, and then you say you just pick okay these ten cities, right? And then yep. you open up re registration in each of those cities and say this city, okay, I'm open up registration now, come register. Yep. And uh -huh. Seattle crash your crash your server, crash the server, <laughs> and. Yeah. Okay. Now, now I'm I'm getting the picture of how how this 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 thing's okay. All right. Okay. So 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 that that was so you started doing this filling up the spot per se right in in mm -hmm. November right. So and you know you know you have a big I mean it's that look and it's pretty obvious that you have a big following now right and and um so when did you start when did you um launch your Kickstarter campaign. The Kickstarter launch the same day I opened registration because I wanted to give. There were a lot of people who don't, who just aren't going to get to participate in the project because they don't live in a city that I'm going to. Yeah. So I thought Kickstarter would be a good way for people to get involved in the project if they couldn't get involved, like, in their own city. So I launched it the day after registration started. Um, I wanted to launch them together, but yeah. The video took a little longer than planned, so there was a slight delay in the launching. Um, but yeah, I think it was the next day. The okay, when was that? What day was that? Uh, January seventh. Okay, so January seventh is when you when you open registration, or January sixth. Uh, when I opened Kickstarter, yeah, it was the seventh. Okay. Okay, got it. So, so let's let's talk about what you need to do before you 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 launch. So obviously you have so you have your um, lots of pug lovers. Yes. Can't wait to, to participate, right? All right, that's yeah. one part. So let's talk about the video. And I saw your video. I thought it was really cool. Oh, the video. Yeah, the video. Uh, the video was uh, a nightmare. But um, I thought it was really cool, Amanda. So what happened? Thank you. Tell me. Um, well, the problem <laughs> with the video was that I don't, I'm not comfortable on camera, and I spent mm -hmm. probably a week. I didn't think it was going to be a big deal. I thought, oh, I'll get on you know, camera and talk for a little while, and everything will be easy and it was awful I couldn't it was just I'm not particularly animated I'm not particularly quirky or interesting and I, like three minutes of me talking was just mind-numbing so I thought okay this isn't working what else can I do yeah. so I just randomly came up with well if I ask other people who were more interesting than me to read a line then I could just stitch all their lines together to tell a story and there you go so it involved about two days of harassing perfectly <laughs> on the street, um, and people were awesome, and people were way more willing than I thought they were going to be. The first couple people I asked said no, 
And I learned yeah. that it was a little easier if I had like somebody with me because it wasn't quite as weird for two people to be asking yeah. than for one person, I think. Yeah. I'm not sure. But I had somebody who helped. And yeah, we just went around for two days and had little index cards. Hold it up. Little index cards. Hello, she's a, I can't see. Oh, okay. She's a um, shoot. And yeah, I just typed out little index cards and handed them to people. I had you know, a tripod and a DSLR and said, you know, just read the line a couple of times. And people were really willing to do it. Um, and it turned out to be way more interesting than me, <laughs> basically. Uh, my brother is a sound engineer and a video guy. So he, you know, produced it once I got all the footage together. And yeah, I was happy with it. It's awesome, man. I, I, that's like I said. It's it's really interesting how it jumps from one line to another, like another person. Ooh, who's this guy? Ooh, who's this guy? Is this a man? Is that? I was I was wondering. Is this the project owner? Is this who? who which? Where's? Where, who's? Who's doing this thing? Yeah, <laughs> and that was kind of what I was hoping for. That it was going to be just by watching, you know, little snippets of people. It was easier yeah. to kind of stick with it than watching the same person just come on and on and on for three minutes. Um, so I'm glad it worked. <laughs> it worked beautifully. Okay, so okay, so you now okay now you you have your video and so what um what what are you raising funds for? Because I know it's not really for it's not creating a book or anything like that. So what what did you? Yeah, the funds for? were um like I said, the project wasn't dependent on the funds. Yeah. There was a sitting fee, um like a ridiculously low sitting fee. When I sat down in the beginning and planned this all out. Um, I had a numbers guy who was like, you're going to be homeless by the time this is over. There's no way this is sustainable. And I was like, no, you know, it'll, it'll work out. It'll work out. And he's like, mm, I don't know. It's not going to work out. So we had kind of counted. Hey, pup. Great. Come, Come on. Get up here. Come here. Come here. Come on. Um, so I had kind of counted on some Kickstarter involvement from the beginning, but I wasn't really sure how it was, how it was going to play out. Um, yeah. And when I started really thinking about how things were going to be. There were things like a laptop that I hadn't counted on and a backup camera that I hadn't, like stuff that I wouldn't normally need at home that I was going to need on the road, and that's what the Kickstarter went towards. So I literally just added up, okay, what do I need? I need a laptop, I need a backup camera, I need a bunch of memory and storage, and that's the number that I came up with um, was my Kickstarter goal. So it was like the dollar amount for those you know, five things. Um, Got it. And that's what it was. Okay, cool. So, and okay, so that's how you came with your funding goal. So, how yes. about with the rewards? How did you come with your rewards? The rewards were about as tough as the video because I don't have an actual product to give people. You know, the yeah. book is in 2013. Um, I thought about maybe using the book, but it's so far out. I just didn't feel comfortable saying like, "Yeah, I'll give you something in a year and a half." I mean, it just yeah. didn't seem it just didn't seem right to me. Um, yeah. So I was going to have uh, T-shirts and tags anyway. So pretty much instead of doing an online store, I just had it had them available through Kickstarter because people were asking me, you know, when can I get the T-shirts? I have these cute little tags, and everybody um, was really into them. So I thought, oh well, instead of selling them on the website, I'll just use Kickstarter as a sales platform. Yeah. Um, and that part was relatively easy, but for the higher rewards. I was I had no idea what I had to offer, um, so I said, okay, what do I have to work with? Photography? Photography? <laughs> Photography? Uh -huh. Like, that's pretty much what I do, so, yeah. and I just made the upper level rewards kind of around my skills, so I offered, you know, private training sessions, I offered, you know, I'll come to your city wherever you live and take your pugs picture, not mm -hmm. thinking anybody in a million years was going to to be interested in that. Yeah. I was actually really surprised because I think there were, you know, five hundred, a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars and people actually were interested in them. Yeah, a lot of people would like your higher tier levels rewards. Because yeah. when I looked around on Kickstarter for ideas, it didn't seem like very many of the higher tier rewards ever went anywhere. So I kind yeah. of just and kind of almost as an afterthought thinking, wow, that would be really cool, but there's no way. And yeah. I actually quite a few of them. Um Quite a few backers were into them, so that was that was really cool. I was excited about That's that. That's awesome. That's awesome. I mean, I guess for every niche and every audience is different with other mm -hmm. projects. So I mean, you never you never know until you actually no. throw it up, right? Yeah, and they've um, 
yeah, I mean, I have a I have a lot of them. I'm going to Philadelphia. I'm going. <laughs> I'm traveling to all these places now to do photo shoots, which yeah, it's great. That's and cool. More the better. It's one thing that I I just love doing, so it's it's easy. Okay. All right. So I I have a question that popped up in my mind um, because I so so I mean. So what? So I mean, the rest is we we know what happened. So you launched it, it blew up, in ni- yeah. 36 hours you wake up, you're like, oh, what the hell, what happened? You know, I, I'm just yeah. imagining. <laughs> oh, I had tech. Well, why don't you tell us what happened? Well, what? Yeah, it was interesting because my big concern, I again, like I didn't think I was going to hit a thousand pugs. Um, I also didn't think that the Kickstarter. I'm like, wow, it's just a big amount of money, and mm. I did not have a whole lot of confidence in hitting it. I thought, you know, great if I do. If not, you know, it's just more money on a credit card kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so when I picked my end date, it's my 39th birthday. So I thought, oh, you know, it's about a month. I figure if I get to the end and I'm kind of desperate, I can hit people up for like birthday presents. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's my birthday, you know, make me nice. really happy. Send me, you know, <laughs> back my project for my birthday. That was kind of you know, kind of the the plan B. If it's it got a strategy. End, if it wasn't working. I'm like, it's my birthday. Come on. Um, but I was worried. I'm like, wow, that just doesn't seem like a lot of time because it's the 15th of February. It's a little over like it was like a month and a week, I think, is what the yeah. duration was. Yeah. Um, for the for the Kickstarter. Yeah. And yeah, like I woke up the next day and it was like almost funded. And I was getting text messages of all my friends like, you just hit this, you just hit this. You know, everybody's calling me. You just, you know, you're you're at 50%. You just hit 10,000. It was like crack apparently for people. They're, they just watched it all day long. And <laughs> I was just blown away, to be honest. I'm like, really? Really? Like the next day? Really? Um, so, yeah, really surprised. Um, it was a little awkward because once we hit the goal, it was like, well, now what? What did you um, know? Yeah. yeah. So that was that was something that I hadn't really thought through. Like, okay, if I hit the goal in a day and a half, then what happens for the rest of the month? Um, yeah. So I pretty much just said, you know, any money that comes in, and it's just going to go into the project. So the more resources I have, the more I'll be able to do. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I think it's, up, it's almost up to 15 at this point. So yeah. I just... Uh, hired an assistant to help me keep up with the emails, and you know, there's definitely, definitely more places for the money to go than there is money to go there. So yeah. I'm really excited that I'll have a little bit, a little bit extra to to put into getting people to help me, basically where it's yeah. going. Yeah. So. Okay. Wow. All right. So I, I've um, okay. I, the question that I, I had was so so my thinking is that the how how it blew up is because you know you put in the work basically three years of work of building that audience in that niche, in this niche. Is that, what do you think about, what um, do you think? It's the niche. It's, it's the, the pugs. Niche. It's the pugs. It's the pugs. Yeah, it's the niche. I'm now convinced that if you find a niche that has passion that drives it, like if I yeah. had done this with, I don't know, Labradors, you know, a thousand Labrador retrievers. I guess maybe there would be a thousand rabid Labrador retriever owners out there, but there's there's definitely something about the pug niche that I knew from the beginning that there was a chance it would work just because of the enthusiasm. I knew the demographic of the people really well. Yeah. Pug people are really into their dogs. They really like to get together. They really like to do things with their dogs. It was it was the niche itself more than anything else that, that drove it. I mean, I have people who are driving 11, 12 hours to do a 15-minute photo shoot. People wow. Are driving three or four states away to do it. And it, they just love these little dogs, which is, you know, why I've been doing a blog every day for the last three years. I mean, it's definitely about the pugs. It has way more to do with the pugs than me. Um, to be honest, I mean, it's the pugs. So I found a niche that people support. And the niche drove the whole everything. I mean, even in terms of the photography, I was thinking about it because I didn't put a lot of photography on the website because I wanted, I didn't want to put client photography on there because it wasn't really representative. Like, I'm doing 15-minute photo shoots. I want to put pictures from 15-minute photo shoots up there, not an hour and a half. I'm just kind of particular about things. There wasn't a ton of photography. 
I don't even think people think the photos that are on there are mine because I was getting weird questions about using studios and I only use outdoor stuff. So it isn't even about my photography. It's not about me. It's just about these little pugs. So wow. I guess my advice for Kickstarter and just projects in general, just find a niche that will be its own vehicle and just get on the vehicle and drive. And for me, I got lucky that it's pugs and it's something that I'm really into. Um, mm-hmm. But that's what I've that's been the most interesting thing about this is if you hit a niche, the niche can can be its own vehicle for sure. That's amazing. Wow, thank you for sharing that. It's like, but but you you started. I I just want to acknowledge you because you said you you started a blog about uh, the pug write the blog. No, the, the pug started the blog three the years ago. The, the fuck? It's not a man. Most it's people don't even know my name until like it's funny because I'm completely anonymous in like I'm. It's oh. not about me. It's about the pug. And wow. people through a thousand pugs finally saw what I looked like. Finally saw I have a name. Like I never mentioned <laughs> my name. I was happy with that. We did a Earth Day video a couple years ago that went viral, and I was on like. Good Morning America or one of those Good Morning shows. I was on a couple of news shows. I was just horrified. I'm like, I don't want to be on TV. Like, can we just put the pug on there? You know, this is about me. It's about the pug. So there's definitely been a couple hits along the way that, um, had, like, the video was big. I know that that brought a lot of people to the blog. And, you yeah. know, people will meet him. They're like, oh, that's the pug from the video. And that had some staying power for sure. Um, but, yeah, it's been a long, I guess it's, it's been yeah three year effort, but not you know it's it definitely wasn't conscious. It just kind of all fell together. That's so. that's uh, so, and I want to ask you one thing like about about your consistency of um, Monday to Friday posting a picture mm-hmm. and and writing uh, a story about it because I saw your I, I I read some of it and it's not like you know two line stories right right so so what. Oh, uh, what? How did you keep it consistent for you? What, what, what um, you? The first year was really easy because he was a puppy, and it was like ah. everything was new, you know, yeah. Thanksgiving, Christmas, you know, and it was really, it was just easy because I could make a post out of anything. It's like he'd see a watermelon for the first time, and it's like, oh, my God, what's a watermelon, you know? <laughs> it was, it, the first year was easy. The second year when, like, you know, a watermelon wasn't new anymore. It's like, God, what do I write about? <laughs> okay. It definitely goes through phases where it's more engaging than other times, depending on what, how busy I am and how much we get out. If we're able to get out a lot, like we fell into a flash mob the other day. We were at the beach and there was a flash mob. And like when stuff like that happens, yeah. it's just easy. It's like, oh, content. Okay, good. Flash mob. Here, we've got a blog. And definitely learn to look for opportunities. Like, oh, I can get a blog post out of this, great. Um, but other than that, it's just knowing that people go there every day. I mean, just get the nicest emails. I met somebody today who's been following it every day for like two and a half years. Wow. So the, the pug and a Dalmatian, and it's just a weird combination. So when people see them, they're like, oh my God, it's that's a pug. I've been following your blog every day for, you know, two years now, and they know all the stories and all the friends. Wow. Like, little vernacular, there's like little terms, like the Jimmy, and it's, <laughs> people get so excited about it for whatever yeah. reason. This kind of keeps me, keeps me doing it every day, because I feel like I'd let people down if I didn't. So. Wow. Okay, yeah. wow. So it's the niche and, and, the, and your, your pug writing the blog. Every day for three years, and yeah, and, and um, and so yeah, what <laughs> is is the niche you see? Yeah. I see. Wow, I I'm just blown away by your story. It's 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 amazing. Oh, let me think. What what else? So so any um any takeaways that you wanna you wanna share about running a successful? Oh oh oh! oh I have a question before that. I have a question because before yeah. you your you're sharing with me um, before we went live. You shared with me the things that you need to deal with. Can you just give us a little bit of a picture of like what you're dealing with right now, in terms of handling this project? Um, the Kickstarter or just the whole thing? Um, both. Let's whichever you want to talk about first. Um, yeah, it's definitely been challenging. There's one of me and at least a thousand <laughs> of everybody else. So. 
that's been a big challenge. Um, like I said, I didn't think, you know, I thought I was going to have trouble reaching a thousand. I thought I was going to have trouble hitting the Kickstarter. I didn't prepare for things to take off as quickly as they did, and I've been in a like constant state of catch up. Um, so that's one thing that I would say to people, like have a contingency built in to where if it just goes nuts, you're ready for it. Because I've been scrambling to find people to help me, to hire the right people. Even hiring somebody has been tough because everything is happening in my head in real time because I haven't really had time to lay out, you know, I haven't had time to develop like a plan or a process yeah. for anything. It's literally everything. I'm just making it up as I go along, basically. And to bring somebody else into that has been really tough because they are just like, uh, what do I do? Can you, can you uh, give me an sure. example? Can you give me an example of that? Like how um, it's, it, things it, are happening it, on the fly? Um, emails are happening on the fly. Uh, each There were things that were supposed to happen, like the scheduling. The scheduling turned into a nightmare because the system got overloaded. So I spent literally a week hand-holding people through making appointments. Um, did not prepare, was not prepared for that. Um, I'm setting up locations for photo shoots in places I've never been. So yeah. there's a lot of like, you know, learning as we go along where, oh, well, I need a permit in these places. Well, I didn't really know I needed a permit because in San Francisco you can do whatever you want. So there's a lot of just little roadblocks along the way that I never knew were yeah. going to be there. Um, and because the timeline on it has been so compressed, I've had to learn a lot. Like every little thing has turned into its own project almost. Yeah. So it's, it's, there's been a lot of a lot of on the fly. Sounds like <laughs> a lot of work. Together. Sounds like a lot of work. I mean, in terms of yes, you need to definitely a lot of. <laughs> yeah. So it seems like you need to, to to schedule them, and you got to find a location. And what you mentioned, and you also mentioned about like you know um, talking to people, like engaging and talking to people. Uh, yeah, the when people send you level email. Has been yeah. tough because that's one thing that I haven't really been able to outsource because people want to engage with me, yeah. and there's only one of me because I'm essentially the pug. I'm the blog. I'm the photographer. I'm I'm the project. So when people send an email telling me, you know, very personal, very like very personal connection emails, they don't want to hear from some random person. They want to hear yeah. from the public. They want to hear yeah. from the photographer. So that's been really challenging just to keep up with. I mean, probably about 300 emails a day. I'd say about 200 of them I can't just hand off to someone else because they won't know what to say. Because half the time I don't know what to say. There's emails in my inbox I look at. I'm like. Oh, wow, I just don't know what to say to this. <laughs> um, so the engagement has been hard because you want to engage with people, yeah. but at the same time, it just gets it gets hard. Sounds sounds <laughs> so like a lot, a lot of time time consuming. You mean? I mean time consuming, yeah. um, thought consuming. Last weekend, I had my first photo shoot, and I was just ecstatic. I'm like, oh my god, I get to be a photographer! Like after all this, to actually take pictures and play with bugs and do what I want to do and do what I love doing. I haven't even had time to write a blog post about it, and it's Friday tomorrow. That's how busy I am with just the scheduling and the rescheduling and the setting up locations to where yeah. like, I was excited to have pug pictures finally, and nobody's seen them yet because I haven't had time to. So that would be the, that would be the big takeaway I have is just for any out there who's putting a project together, just be prepared in case it does exceed all your expectations because yeah. right now I feel like I'm not doing the best job keeping up with the project where I feel like I could be doing better um, but literally I get three hours of sleep as it is there's just there is no less sleep that I can have <laughs> I just don't have any more time than I have so um, wow. yeah have it all dialed in first because catching up isn't always an option Got it. So I have a contingency plan for if it's going to blow up or even it's not. I mean, for both, right? And exactly, like, yeah. Because I don't care for it not to go. You know, I'm like, okay, it's going to go like four part of it. But if it does go, I, yeah, I, I was not, you know, I was kind of look at worst case scenario because you want to be prepared for that. But I didn't yeah. put a whole lot of thought into best case scenario. And mm -hmm. I, you need to because, especially okay. if you're just one person. Um, because right now, like I start in March, I'm going to be gone two weeks out of every month. 
So like if it's not caught up and dialed in in the next month, like I'm never going to get caught up because at some point I actually have to go be a photographer and do this yeah. project um, yeah. to where I have pretty much a month to get somebody else completely driving the maintenance bus so I can go and like actually do the project. Yeah. Um, so. so delivering the project, like fulfilling the project. Yeah, going and actually you know, doing 30 photo shoots in a day and taking a thousand bug pictures, you know, yeah. that, that at some point it happens. Yeah. So that would be my big thing to somebody, just be prepared for it to go better than you ever imagined it could. Wow. That's, the, the yeah. From the pug camp. That's, that's awesome. I mean, I heard your, uh, so, so, so what's your schedule like now? So for, for the year? Like do you? Um, for, for the yeah. photography part of it? Yeah, 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 or, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the photography project, the, 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 yeah. Let's see, yeah, starting in May, I'm going to be gone for two weeks out of the month. Uh, for May, April, June, March, <laughs> I'm just going to be traveling. And then I come back and I take July and August to do local shoots. And then I'm gone yeah. for a month in the fall. And then yeah. hopefully at that point, I'll have all a thousand, I want to get all a thousand pugs shot by October. And then okay, the rest of the clean. month, do, do the book, and then have the book ready for, for next year. Okay. So, yeah. Wow, congratulations. Yeah, it's exciting. Um, and I still, like, I haven't had as much time or energy to enjoy it as much as. Like, yeah. every now and then it'll hit me. I'm like, wow, this really worked. I'm really doing this. This is really mm -hmm. happening. And it's, it's amazing. Yeah, it's pretty cool when I have, when, I, when that hits, because I'm like, wow. It, it actually, this is happening. When I was taking pictures, I'm like, wow, this is really, like, all of this, like, sleeplessness and craziness and emailing and everything, like, I get to do what I wanted to do. I get to photograph all these bugs and wow. make people happy. It was, the, some of the photo shoots, I mean, there were people who had, you know, 15-year-old dogs who aren't going to be around very much, and they were really yeah. grateful that they're like, wow, I'm going to have these pictures forever, and my dog's going to be in this book forever, and, you know, being wow. a dog person. I know what that, what that means. means to people. So yeah. that was something I never even, it didn't even occur to me until this past weekend, knowing like, wow, I'm pretty much immortalizing these dogs for these people. And yeah. it's a really cool thing to be able to do. So. Wow. So, yeah. so you, you get to do what you love when you're yeah. shooting. Yeah. Yep. Wow. That's, that's just, I mean, I'm, I'm moved just, just listening to what you just said, being yeah. able to do that. Yeah. So, and again, there's many sequels planned already. Let's see, there's, because <laughs> I'm still getting emails from people, and it's like, I don't know what to tell you. Like, I'm full. And I'm getting, well, in 2013, you should do international pugs, and in 2014, <laughs> you could do, you know, pugs of the United States. So I could keep going with this for a long time, which is awesome. Wow. So you, so you mean sequel? You mean the, the Knicks, 2000, uh, Knicks 1,000 pugs? Is that what you mean? Like uh, I don't think there will be another 1,000. I think 1,000 is going to be 1,000, but there's definitely a demand out there for pug photography projects. Um, uh -huh. So, you know, ah, Pugs of America, Pugs of Unlimited. Oh, unlimited. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because there's definitely people asking to people put on a waiting list for whatever I do next. So, wow. Yeah. Wow. Awesome. Tongue, it's the niche. Find the niche, let the niche come to you, and you, yeah, find a, a very enthusiastic niche. I, I got your lessons. Thank you so much for sharing with us. <laughs> sure. Well, um, thank you so, again, thank you so much. I know you're very busy and you don't get much sleep and you still took your time to, to um, do this interview with us and, and share what you learn and Hi, um, <laughs> hello hello can he well, he had his 15 minutes you got your fame little buddy okay so, well I yeah, hope that so something um, helps somebody out there because Kickstarter is definitely an amazing platform to get to make things happen just get people behind you and yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty cool. Awesome. All right. So if if people who are watching Amanda's project is still live, so you can you want to go check out her project, you can just all you got to do is um, go to Kickstarter and type in 1,000 pugs on the search bar on the top, and you can check out her project. And for those of you who want to see more of these interviews and want to learn how you can raise 
funds and you to use Kickstarter to raise funds for a project of your own, you can also check out the project that I have right now. It's called Kickstarter Rockstar. All you got to do is type Kickstarter Rockstar in the search bar, just like how you search 1,000 pucks on Kickstarter, and you'll find, be able to find my project. And that's it for today, and thank you again, Amanda. Very nice. Sure. Thanks, Brian. I'm going to go check out your project now. <laughs> okay, cool. All right. All right. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.